the stuff that you were doing two years ago, you should be still doing. Amen? It, it, as you continue in His Word and continue in relationship with Him, what will happen, those things will begin to fall off of you. Amen? It will begin to be pruned off of your life. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this word, my God. We thank you, Father, for this word even tonight. We pray that you show yourself strong. Lord, as we continue, Lord, as even teaching on intimacy with God, Father God, we thank you, Father, that, Lord God, it's, it's for us, Lord, to learn more about you, Lord, just to stay, Father, and have that intimate relationship with you. Father God, we thank you in this day, Lord, that this word is falling on fertile grounds, my God, that one will just, like a soaking sponge, that, Lord, as, Lord, a sponge will just soak it in, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord God, we thank you and we bless you, Father, because in intimacy with you, Lord, is very vital, my God, because you are our vital necessity. We seek you every night and day, Lord. We seek you, Lord, because we want to know your will concerning our lives, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, we just want to thank you and bless you, and we pray that you show yourself strong in our lives, Lord, as we diligently seek you, Father, in the name of Jesus, because it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the living God, that all things in our lives are in line with your word. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we want to grow, my God. We want to know you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In a deeper way, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, and we bless you, Father, in the name of Jesus, because you are Jehovah Ishi, our first husband, my God. We thank you, Lord, that you are, Lord God, you are a savior, Father. You are the redeemer of our lives and the saver of our souls. True love comes from you, O Lord, because you are the lover of our souls. And we thank you, Lord. That intimacy with you is very vital. And we thank you and we bless you, Father. Show yourself strong even tonight, Lord, and touch our lives and turn our lives around, Lord, for the good. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yet yeah, remember last week um, we went to uh, we went to Jeremiah twenty you know Jeremiah twenty nine verse eleven and we started there. We we spoke about going down from verse eleven because I think we should just go there quick just to uh, go back just to remind you where we're coming from with this. Amen. Look at 11, okay? We, we, we were talking about intimacy with God. And you see, when you are intimate with God, you want God to reveal himself to you. You know, and I remember when I spoke about that, when you're in a relationship, you call each other, you text each other. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, what's going on? You know, even just, you can spend 12 hours just talking about nothing, but just, you know, loving each other. It has to be like that with God. You know, if you can do it with your wife, if you can do it with your boyfriend, surely, you know, you can do it with your girlfriend, surely you can do that with God, you know? You know, people will be thinking that, how come does God talk to you? You know, you say that God speaks to you. I say, yes, God speaks to me, you know? He does speak to me. He can speak to me through his word as I read the word. He can speak to me, you know, even through dreams and visions. God directly, he speaks, you know? So how do you develop that? By intimacy. How do you develop that? You, in, you know, if someone calls you, that's when you are able to identify what? You are able to identify the voice of God. Because if your boyfriend calls or your husband calls or your wife calls, you will know it's there. When he says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger, they will not follow. That means you know the voice of God. You know, when someone calls you and say, ah, okay, some, some guy can call me and say, I'm Sean. I say, which Sean? Because I know who's, who's Sean, my husband. No, you are not the one. Because I know his voice. 
Even in his sleep, when he, he drowsy, I know his voice. That's right, right, Pazzi? You know Steve's voice. That's right. You know? So it, it's like you know, you know that person. You know that person. Christian, you know when she talks, you know, you, you, you know. So you should be able to identify the voice of God when the Lord is speaking to you. You know, how do we do that? By intimacy. Because there is no way you will say you know a person by you not spending time with them. That's impossible. You know, that's impossible. They can ask you about your, your husband. You will describe him. You know him. They'll ask you about your girlfriend or your boyfriend. You will describe him because you know them. They'll ask you about your children, like, hey, that's my son or that's my daughter, you know? So when God speaks to you, you, you should be able to identify the voice of God when he speaks to you. How? Intimacy. Amen? That's intimacy. That's why he says that even here, Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Actually, I'll read it in King James. He says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. It doesn't end there. Amen? Because if that, there is that intimacy with God, it won't end there. Because you know what? For God to fulfill which that he has called you to do, you have to be diligently seeking him. Amen? Because in verse 12, he says, Then shall he what? Call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. You see, when... <laughs> wow, this is amazing. You see, God says that, then you call upon him. He says, then he shall call upon me, and he shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Number one, you call upon the name of the Lord. He says, whoever calls upon his name, you, what, what does he do? You shall be saved. He shall, you shall be saved. He shall hear you. No matter in what difficulty, he says that when you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. We shall be saved. Amen. No matter what situation. And then what does he say? Then, after you call upon the name of the Lord, he says, and you shall go and pray. And after we pray, he says, and I will hearken unto you. He will listen. He will hear you. Oh my God. There is a scripture. This scripture, I know that you see what he's saying. You see, when you begin to call upon the Lord, that means there is repentance that is involved in it. It's not on its own. When you begin to seek God diligently with all your heart, with everything you got, there is that diligency. You know, you come with repentance. You're not coming just, oh Lord, ah, you know what, I'm just coming, I need this. No. You begin your prayer with the Lord if there's something because you know something is being blocked in your life you know something is being a hindrance in your life why is it lord you're not hearing my prayer that means something is wrong what is it if it's not the enemy blocking my prayer is there a hindrance in me is it me is there something that i'm doing that is wrong that is a stumbling block to you that you can't hear me you know what watch this i want you to go why am i saying these words Go to, Jer go to Isaiah 59. Look at this. I want you to keep that. Uh, 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 Jeremiah 29. I want you to keep that. But I want you to go to Isaiah 59. Look at this. This one and two. He says that. Are we all there? Amen. He says, this one, he says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy, that it cannot hear. Did you hear that? But verse 2, he says, But your iniquities have, have separated between you and, God, and your God, and your sins have, 
Has he hid his face from you that you will not hear? So when we call upon the name of the Lord, what happens? When we, when we now diligently seek God, because when you diligently seek God, that means you are searching your heart. Amen? And say, Lord, search my heart. And if you find anything that's not right, Lord, I brought it. I don't want it. Because it's a hindrance between me and you. Now my prayers are not being answered. You know, because something in me that is there, that is a stumbling block. Why is that my prayers are being hindered? It's because the Bible says what? Because of your sins and your iniquities. Because sometimes, okay, talking about deliverance, because the, your sins and your iniquities, the sins that is in your bloodline, that may cause God not to hear, you know, that may cause a stumbling block in your life, you know, because we want God to hear our prayers. But if we, we are the ones that have grieved the Holy Spirit and nothing is moving in our lives and nothing is being shaken, that means there is a problem. There is a problem. That means us, we are a problem. Amen. He says, he, you know, he cannot hear. It's not because he can't do it for you. He can do it. God is able. He can do anything for you. Because he said, you know, when you ask for bread, God won't give you what? A rock or a stone? When you ask for fish, God won't give you what? A snake? No. He will give you what you ask for. God will give it to you. Yes, according to his will. That's right. That's right, Pastor John. According to his will. Okay? But God will hear you. He's not going to... He say, the Bible says, no good thing will you withhold from them that walk upright. No, never. No good thing will you withhold from those that walk upright with him. God, he, in everything that he does is intentional. You know, God is intentional in everything that he has done concerning doing everything. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So there's nothing that God didn't do intentionally. When he spoke his word, everything came forth. And when he, you know what? When he created us, he created us out of his own image. Because everything is intentional. When he breathed in that, in that clay that he built out of his own image, he breathed in it. And it came alive. That was Adam. Everything with God is intentional. God is calling you. It's the end times. God is calling you by name. He knows you by name. He is calling you by name. He's calling you to be intimate with him. You don't want to be somewhere else where God wants you. He wants to pos God has positioned you for miracles. God has positioned you for miracles, signs, and wonders. Where are we missing it? Because God wants us to be stable. In seeking him, your intimacy with God, it should be a yo-yo. It should be stable. You know, it should be stable. You should have that sta stability in God, you know, so that you'll be secure in God. You know, you can't be secure in anything else but him. Because your life is in him. You know, your life is in God. As in, in him we live, we move, and we have our being. Amen? So what am I saying here? Before I give it to Pastor Shep, um, it's It says verse, uh, verse, uh, verse 13. He says that, And ye shall seek me and find me. Then ye shall what? Search for me with all your heart. And I will find, and you, I will be found by you, says the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all places, whither, uh, sorry, hither I have driven you. 
says the Lord, and I will bring you again into a place, hence I caused you to be carried captive. That means he's a God of deliverance. Amen? He will bring you to a place of freedom. Amen? He will bring you to a place of freedom where God will restore everything where the canker on had eaten in your life, God restored. Because he's a God of restoration. Amen? Because he's drawing you back to him. Whatever had held you back, but God is saying, you're my son, you're my daughter. I want you for myself because I'm a jealous God. He loved you that much. That is jealousy for him. Because he doesn't want you to wonder. He wants you for himself. Amen. That's the God we worship. Look at John. Look at John chapter 4. Remember the woman with the, with the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. You know that Jesus was talking to her. I'm not going to go into the whole story. But you know, when Jesus spoke to that woman, he said the Samaritans, they didn't know who, which God that they worship. You understand? He told that woman that he spoke about the God. You, you're talking about worship. You worship, the, you, you worship the one that you don't know. You don't know what you're talking about. You know? He says, he says, he, he says that, uh, verse 22, he says that, um, actually, it starts from verse uh, 21. Verse 21, Matthew 4, verse 21. Sorry, John, I don't know why I'm going to Matthew. <laughs> Praise God. So it's John chapter 4, verse 21. It says that, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Verse 22. Ye worship, he says, ye worship, ye know not what, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. He said that. He said to that woman, the Samaritan didn't know whom they worshipped. And they didn't understand anything about worship. But he said to the woman, salvation belonged to the Jews. And then verse 23 says, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For this, the Father seeketh such worship him. God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Look at that. God is spirit. So those that worship God should seek God in spirit and in truth. So God wants us to be intimacy. You, intimacy is spiritual. You know, so intimacy with the spiritual. It's not something that we say that, oh, no, it's a fleshly thing. That's why I will go deeper a little bit. That's why when you, are, when you have intimacy, sexual contact with people, it's spiritual. You become one with them. I'm going to teach on that when, we te when you teach on spiritual warfare and deliverance and, and teach on that because it's important. That's why that woman, she slept with a lot of men. She came in with, she had a lot of men, she was a prostitute, but then Jesus said, you had five husbands, and the one that you live with now is not yours. You know? And that means every man that she slept with, she, that, there, were, there was a transformation of spirits. She, the, you know, <laughs> The person that she slept with, that means they transferred the spirit, whoever they slept with, it went to that woman. And whoever that woman slept with, it went to that man. There were transformations of spirits and of demonic spirits. That's why Jesus addressed it this way, that you have five husbands and the very one that you live with right now is not your husband. So intimacy, that one-to-one -one right there when God 
revealed himself to that woman. And Jesus revealed himself to that woman. He revealed himself and said to that woman, he is the Messiah that they've been waiting for. I am he. He said he was he. Amen? So. No, I, I was going to say, uh, there's like two things there. When he says, thou shalt worship in me in spirit and in truth. That's right. It's two things that go on. The spirit, which is with your heart. And truth is with your soul, because that's the word. Amen? Amen. It says, when you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. Amen? Amen? It's not knowing God just by his word. It's knowing him by your, which is the soulish realm, because that's where you renew your mind. But you also get the word in your heart, right? So that's worship in the spirit, which is also having a relationship with them in your heart amen? Amen. amen not just your head a lot of people can know the word because they have a head knowledge but not a heart knowing where they have an intimate relationship with god they can know the word and quote it just like they can quote football teams basketball teams a lot of things but do they know the players no they can tell you everything that they think they know about a person by what they read the stats the cards and all that but saying you really know a person is when you can pick up the phone and call that person you can go to their house that's when you really know you know a person right because you're you're not just your friends but also you have a relationship where you talk consistently consistently you don't know, like that not just saying why well, you you may know about someone but you don't really know them you know, knowing about them is you tell me all the things that you think, how good they play, what they what they can do, what their stats and all that is. That's all good. But knowing someone is not just based on their performance, right? It's based on knowing them and having a relationship with someone. Amen? I'm talking about, you know, I can be, because there's different boundary things where you can have association with someone and just say hello and you know them that way it's just it's just an association you know you say hi and that's it that's as far as it goes you say hello how's everything going today when you cross the other boundary then it's getting to kind of know them and then it's not just hi you, you're talking you know you get to know what they like what they don't like then it comes to really beyond that is a relationship where you're now, you know, a, a continually thing where you're talking. It becomes like a friendship. And then from a friendship, it becomes a relationship like that. that that's where there's different, like four of them. You know, it, it's acquaintance. Then you have as far as like a... It, well, acquaintance is just hello, but then beyond that, you have like a friendship, and then it goes on relationship, you know, like that. And then the last part is where someone, if it's between a, you know, a sp two people, then they become like as far as one where they can get married that way. And that's the boundaries as far as that a person cross. But a person's got to know how far they set their boundaries with someone. Amen. I don't just because. My relationship with my wife is different than my relationship with someone I may know or my family, my parents or something, right? Or my friends. So there's different boundaries of how you bring your relationship. So with God, some people are that way too. You know, their relationship could be long distance with God. You know, they're, they're just like, well, it's Sunday or it's Wednesday, that's when they come, you know, it's not a continual thing. But God's word says this. Look at this. I want you to see something. He says here in uh, the book of John, uh, John chapter, John chapter uh, 8, I want you to see something.
It says here, it says in verse, I, I'll kind of uh, just go, Jesus was talking to, you know, as far as the Pharisees and everything, and he told them, you know, if you continue my word, because he was talking about they believed, but that, that doesn't mean they have a relationship with God. You know, they just said they believe on him. But he said, if you continue my word, then you shall my, be my disciples. You know, people that are disciplined, people that are learned. And then you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And then they sought to kill Jesus. You know, as far as what he was saying. He said this in verse 55. He said, he told them to the Jews, yet you have not known him. And in other words, you don't even really have a relationship or know who he is. Because he said, but I know. And in other words, because first he said, I do everything that's pleasing in his sight. Amen. Yeah, he, he's on that one accordness with them. And he said, if I should say, I know I'm not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his what? Sayings. So in other words, he's saying, I have a relationship with him, but I also keep what he says, his words. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and so he tells us here, if we go on first, go to uh, John 15. Go here for a minute. Yeah. He says right here, Jesus said in verse 1, He said, I am the true vine. And my Father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, and that beareth mean, I always say it means continually. You know, it's not just one time in John chapter 15, verse 2. It says, he purges or prunes it that it may bring forth more. So he's talking, he's comparing a person as a tree. So purging is cutting off dead things in their life, things that don't glorify God. So why? It can produce fruit for the next time. Amen? Like a tree. If you want to grow, some of them, I see these guys at Landscape, man, they tore the whole, all the branches. I'm like, there's nothing left. You know, but they know what they're doing because when they cut it, it looks like there's no, like a few little branches, but they know when it grows next year, it's going to produce more fruit, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the same way in our life. He, he'll prune us and that stuff that doesn't glorify him, that stuff that, you know, it doesn't really belong to him. So it gets cut off in our life or falls off of our life. Amen. As we continue to abide in him. The stuff that you were doing two years ago, you should be still doing. Amen? It, it, as you continue in His Word and continue a relationship with Him, what will happen, those things will begin to fall off of you. Amen? It will begin to be pruned off of your life. Praise God. And so He said, Now are you clean through the Word which I have spoken to you? He said, Abide in me. And I in you, as a branch cannot bear forth fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So abiding in him is having a relationship with him. Right. Amen? Amen? And that's where he, he, a person, you will see the fruit of someone as they continue in them. I'm not saying things happen always overnight, mm -hmm. but I'm saying if you really continue in them, you'll see things that, look, if a person lives in the world, let's say they were going to church at all the time and then they go in the world, you'll see the fruit of the world come out of their life, mm -hmm. right? Because why? They hang around the world and that's what's going to start hanging and coming out of them. They're going to start walking after things of the flesh. But if you hang out with the Lord and you begin to build that relationship with them and talking to them and spending time, I'm saying in his word, I'm not like you have to be in it 24 hours a day like you got nothing else to do. But it's learning how to walk with them. Just like a person learns that they, they got their phone on them now before you couldn't do that. But now like, oh, someone texts you. 
you're writing right back. Why? Because you're communi- you're keeping in communication. You could be at work knowing you ain't supposed to text, but because you know them, oh, look at that. They'll be on their phone and they'll write back. Why? Because they're communicating with them. It's the same thing with the Lord. You can be working and talking to them, right? Just like you're texting someone. Amen? But you can talk where you're thinking about them and thinking of what he's saying or what, what, what I need to do in this situation or how I can go or just giving things to them. Lord, you, you know what's going on with this person. I just give, I just give you to them. That, that's learning to communicate, amen, which produces a relationship, amen, with them. And that's what he wants us to do, to abide in them so we can be, bring forth fruit. What's that fruit? It says in Galatians chapter 5, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, it's joy, it's peace, it's gentleness, goodness, meekness. It says, or patience, and it says it's long-suffering. There's nine fruits, and temperance, where you have self-control. The faith, one of them's faith, that means faithfulness. Having faithfulness toward the Lord, amen? Where, Where you're faithful with Him. Because God abideth faithful. Amen? And he, he doesn't deny He doesn't deny himself as far as even when we deny him, God's still faithful and won't deny himself and his word and what he says. Amen? Amen. So here he says right here. Look at this, verse 7. He says, if a man abide in me, in John 15, verse 7. If a man abide in me and my words abide or dwell in you, you shall ask what you will and what will happen. It shall be done unto you. Amen? When when you have that time and you spend with them, I'm not saying that, you know, everyone's asking all these things, you know, things from them. I'm saying that you can be asking to pray for someone and you're praying for them and it'll be done. You know, it says, if you lay hands on the sick in his name, what? They shall be healed. Amen? Amen. You know, it's not just asking things, but it's having a relationship with them. Amen? Amen. Like, a a, a relationship is like, if it's her birthday, what I do? I buy her something or I give her something. When it's my birthday, she gives me something. Amen? (laughs) Like that? That's showing we're giving in exchange. It's not not a one-way thing where they're always giving to me and I'm never giving back like that, you know, as a relationship, amen? And that's with the Lord. The Lord works with us and in us, amen? Amen. He said he's co-laborers when it comes to work with us where we abide in him, his word abides in us. When we ask things, he'll do it for us, amen? And he'll ask us to do things where we should be doing it for him as well. Amen. 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 That that's what a relationship is. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I want to say something. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I just want to say something. Like when you say that, you see, people should envy your relationship with Jesus. At your work, wherever in the family, everything. I was kicked out of the family because of the love of Jesus I have. You know. I was kicked out because I love God that much. Not that I was rebelling against anybody, but it was stirring up some things. You understand what I'm saying? So even when when I was, I remember the time I was, I had gone to youth the mission. You know, I was in, in with the youth the mission, and I was there, and it happened that someone. You know, they looked at my life. They saw what God was doing. You, you understand? It, they didn't understand how I love God that much. We were all Christians from all over. You know, we all love God. But we love God differently. You know? We love God differently. They did. They, they, we were all Christians. I mean, people came from everywhere and being in youth, the mission, maybe from some, they came from the, 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 like Baptists and Pentecostals and all people were there, you know. But you see, my love with, with, for the Lord is always radical. 
I, I, it, it didn't matter. It's not for you. But my, my, it wasn't for anybody. It's like just, I just love God. You understand? I had this thing that, Lord, I love you and nothing will stop me. In a way that someone said that you're loving Jesus. I mean, we are Christians, guys. We were all Christians from everywhere. You know, we were in the school of missions. You know, you, Francis, you know, you to the mission. I think you guys, all of us was, were Christians. But they, someone happened to be, have a problem with my loving Jesus. You know? They had a problem. They said, I want, what is it that you have, that God, there's something about you I don't understand. You know, I don't understand your relationship with God. How different is it from mine? I didn't have whatever they had. All I had it was Jesus, guys. All I had, it was just the Lord. Just trusting the Lord, just loving the Lord. Spending time in, you know, reading the word and spending intimacy with God that caused a havoc. I'm telling you that if the simplicity, that simple relationship with God can cause a havoc at your job and people start looking at you differently. That's how come you've changed the way you talk, the way you walk, the way you do things. What's with you? You know, and they can see because the spirit in them can see that. No, 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 no. This person is with the Lord. There's something about this person. You know, there's something about this person. It's Jesus. And they can hear your language. You know, they can hear your language. No, 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 this person is with the Lord. And it happened that they looked at me like I was, and my family thought that I was worked, like I'm gone local. I'm telling you. They thought that my sister, that my sister really went to even to the leaders of youth of the mission at the base and said, I have never in my life have seen anybody who prays like her. I think she's lost it. Can the leadership talk to my sister? I mean, that's my young sister. She can tell you that, it, I, it, I mean, to them, they didn't understand the spiritual things that that intimacy I had with God. It didn't matter to me what you thought about me. It didn't matter even in the streets as I walked and I would be singing. I can be walking at 1 a.m. coming from church and singing. You could hear me. And I'm going, I'm walking back home, you know, because you have to walk maybe for an hour or two just walking to church and walk back, you know, in, in the after work praise and worship practice or something or Bible study, you're walking back home and you're singing, you're just walking, you know, that's how the love of God will cause you, it didn't, there was no danger, there was no danger. You know, even when I faced some things, there was no danger because I knew God was there. So I was fearless. I had this boldness, unstoppable, unmovable, unshakable. That's what God wants you and me to be like. That we trust God despite what's going on around us. You know because you're intimate with him. You know he'll come through for you. You have nothing is shaking you know, it delaying, even things are delayed in your life. You're like, I know he will come through for me despite the time because man has their own time uh, concerning things. You know, you have your own time, but God's timing is perfect. You know, because he that you are in love with, Jesus, he will perfect which that concerns you. Because when you stay intimate with him, this is what I'm talking about, that you're fearless unstoppable, unshakable. You, you know, your security is in Jesus. So you know, you delight yourself. Remember, let's go to uh, Psalms 37. We, we, we read it last week. We talked about it. But when you delight yourself in the Lord, he will show himself strong. Look at Psalms 37. What does it say? We'll start from verse 3. 
It says that trust in the Lord and do good, so shall thou dwell in the land, and very and verily thou shalt be what? Thou shalt be fed. That means God will take care of you. He is Jehovah Jireh. Amen. He is our provider. That means it doesn't mean financially only. It means spirit, soul, and body. That means you won't lack anything. Like what, what does uh, Psalms 23 verse 1 says? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So you won't be found wanting. Because you know that you know that you know that the Lord is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That means you know that you know that God, he will make sure that he will take care of you. Amen? You won't be found wanting. And then what does it say in verse 4? Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Huh. I'm telling you. He said that you delight in him. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So that means when we stay and be intimate with God and you seek God, you know, spending time with God, I'm not saying spend time with God because you want things. You're spending time with God because you love Him. You're spending time with God because, you know, this is my life. You know, this is my life. I'm just seeking you, Lord, because I love you. I wasn't, like, I didn't, like, when I was even in Africa, I don't seek God for money. You know, say, Lord, I really need money. You know, I, you know, I got this, I got need this. No, I didn't. I just loved God. But he showed up. He always showed up, you know. And I didn't say, I just said, Lord, I just need you. And my prayer and my desire is you. I just love you. I just want to sit here. Just sit there and read the word and just pray and just love the Lord. You know? You just pray and just love the Lord. He said what? They said, delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desire, the desires of thine heart. What is your heart's desire? What is your heart's desire? Because the God you worship, he'll bring it to pass. But he's not talking about selfish desires of your own all selfly lust. But he's talking about the desires that are in line with God's word concerning your life so that you may fulfill which that he's called you to do. Oh, watch this. Okay, I want you to watch it. You must hold here. Just hold that. But why am I saying what I'm saying right now? Okay, go to Romans 12. Look at this. Romans 12, what does he say? He says, this one, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen? And then verse 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind, that ye may prove that that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, the perfect will of God. You want to know the perfect will of God upon your life. Intimacy with God. There is no way that you know the perfect will of God in your life that you don't have intimacy. Because when you have intimacy with God, God is going to pour out to you. He's going to reveal even those hidden secrets that he hasn't revealed to you yet because you are lacking. There are things that God is calling you to. Things that God wants to reveal himself to you. But we are lacking in intimacy with him. He wants you to be grounded in the word. 
He wants you to know the, his will concerning your life. But how? By delighting yourself in God. By as you read this word and stay in this word, God is going to show himself strong. Amen. God is going to show himself. He, want, he says no good thing will I hold, withhold from them that walk upright. There is no way that you will withhold anything from me. God will reveal himself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He says, commit thy way. He says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Oh, my God. Yes, Lord. He shall bring it to pass. When you commit yourself, commit your way in the Lord. He says, he says, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. There is the commitment. Verse 5 speaks of commitment. Look at that. Verse 3 speaks of trust. You trusting in God. You and me trusting in the Lord with everything. And do good. There's no way that you just do good. You do good because your mind is transformed by the word of God. You do good because your mind is renewed through the word of God. That's his intimacy. You don't just do stuff like that. You know, you are transformed. You're doing good. Everything changes. You know, I can't say stop this, stop that. No, 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 no. Allow the word of God to transform you by intimacy, drawing to God. He's the only one that will shift your life and make it to the beautiful because he's the what? We are the, we are the clay. He is the porter. And what does he do? He's making us to the beautiful. If we have little cracks, what does he do? He meshes it. And, and, and mix it together and break those, making sure that he, he makes us. And so that we won't find any cracks around because you have to be perfect, a perfect vessel, a vessel of honor. Because there are many vessels in the house of God. There are vessels of wood, there are vessels of, 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 of silver, vessels of God, of gold, sorry, and vessels of honor. You want to be a vessel of honor. Amen? You want to be a vessel of honor. God wants to want to use you. God wants to use you. Yes, yes, go ahead. I, I'll say this. You know, when, when she says delight, the word, the garden of Eden, it means the garden of delight. Mm -hmm. That's what Eden was. It was, a, it was delight or pleasure. Amen? <laughs> God didn't make it for like where when something's undelightful, you know, something that's delightful, you take pleasure in, you take pleasure being there. It isn't something you don't want to be there, amen? amen? So the Garden of Eden was a place where Adam dwelled, where he had a relationship with God, amen? It was a place of delight. So when you dwell in that secret place of God of the Most High, that's where you have delighted intimacy with them. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, intimacy is the same word when they say a per intimacy is the same way when you say, when they talk about intercourse, because your intercourse is where two places are meeting with each other, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's the same way, but intimacy is in that way also, because two ways are coming to the same agreement, that's amen, right. Whoa. on the same accord, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it says here, look at this, in Psalms 1, I want you to see something, and we know this scripture just about delighting. Mm -hmm. Psalms 1 says, blessed is the man or the woman that what? Walketh down the counsel of the ungodly. Mm -hmm. Amen. That ain't a place where you find delight. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It says, nor standeth in the way of sinners. We're, we're there. You know, it's one thing you're going on. Don't get me wrong. You're mm -hmm. ministering to the people and all that. 
I'm saying when you hanging out, legitimately doing what they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. And he says right here, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, those who mock God's way of doing things. You know, they're mocking them. They're, they're, they laugh about, joke about it, you know, like that. But it says, what is the person's delight that the person that has a relationship with the Lord? He said his delight is in what? The word of the Lord. His delight is in the teachings of God. Amen. Amen. So he said, delight yourself in the Lord. One of them is delighting in his word, right? His teaching, that's what the word says. And what is it? It is his meditation day and night. Just like when you take a delight in somebody, what are you doing? You're thinking about them all day. You're thinking about, man, when I get off work, I can call them or hang out with them. Then you think about after you hang out, you go at home, I can get on the phone and talk to them. Then you think about when you wake up in the morning, yeah, well, what we can do, you plan in your day with them. That's how you should be with the Lord, planning your time with them, talking to them. You don't like that. You got a basic, like, kind of a relationship. I'm not saying he's your boyfriend or girlfriend, anything like that. You reverence him, you respect him, but you have that time of relationship, talking, you know, to him. And what is the other thing? That's with the word. The other thing is in Psalms 40. Look at this. In Psalms 40, he says right here in verse, I'll read verse 6, 7, and 8. It, it says, sacrifice and offering. Now, I'll start at verse 5. He says right here, Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts, which are to us word. That's the Lord being mindful of us. He said, what is man in Psalms, what, 5, 8? He said, what is man that thou art mindful of me? And in other words, I'm always on his mind. God always has us on his mind. He said we're engrafted in the palm of his hand. And then he says right here, whoops, I just, the page just flipped. It says right here, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. And in other words, they can't even be counted how much his thoughts are toward us. And he says, if I would declare and speak of them, they are more than they can be numbered. It's just like in the book of John. It says, if we were to write all of what Jesus did in those three and a half years, it said they can't even re be recorded in all the books to be made about it. Mm. That's just like his thoughts toward us mm. is his work that he did for us. Mm. Amen. Mm. His thoughts, we can't even, it can't even be numbered mm. about how much he really loves us and how much he thinks on us and his goodness towards us. Amen. It says in Jeremiah 33, I believe, no, 31 verse 3, 2, it says how he draws us by his loving kindness. Amen. Amen. But he says here in verse 6, sacrifice and offerings thou didst not desire. My ears has thou opened. He said he opened our ears and he said burnt offering and sin offerings you have not even required. He didn't want that, the old covenant ways of offering up the animal sacrifices. That wasn't his desire. But what was his desire? He said, then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. He's talking about Jesus came in the book that's written of him. Well, God has a book written for us of what his plans and his purposes are for us. Amen? Amen. And for us to know that, that's why we have a relationship so we can know what he has already written down and pre-ordained, pre-written mm -hmm. in his book for our life, what is written already, what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Amen? The best life for us. It says in Psalms 139 about how we were, how he hid us in the mother's womb and how we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. And he said how he already written down before we were born what he already has for us to do. 
Amen. Mm -hmm. He has these things for us. That's how much he loves us. Mm -hmm. And he says right here, verse 8, I delight to do what? Your will, oh my God. Yea, your law or your word is written in my heart. Amen. So one thing is delighting in his word and meditating on it. The second thing is, is delighting in his will, mm -hmm. to do his will. Why? Because what? He said his law is in his heart. Mm -hmm. Amen? It's mm -hmm. not just in his head, knowing him with a head knowledge and knowledge. It's knowing him with a heart. Amen. Amen. To do his will. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. It says it says in 1 Corinthians I believe it's chapter 7 or 8. It says this. It says, knowledge puffeth up. Yeah. And knowledge is just the head knowledge, knowing something. Amen. Not intimacy knowledge, but it's having here, it says head knowledge. So right here he says, in 1 Corinthians 8.1, he says, now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up. And in other words, it makes a person prideful because they may think, oh, I know more than you. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all good, but you don't know everything. That's right. God does. That's mm -hmm. right. You, get, you can't tell me all the people. You may know some things. You don't know everything because you can't tell me about another person in another world, uh, in another country. You don't know all those people. You can't tell me everything about them. You may be telling me some things you know about them, but you can't tell me everything where you know them all. Amen. We don't know everyone in the world. God does. Amen. Amen. And so he said, but what does charity do? It builds up. It edifies. That's what love does. That's what God does for us. He wants to build us up. Amen? Amen. It's one thing where I could sit up here and tell you how much I know about the word. Okay, that's good. Who's it building up? Me or you? Mm. Amen? But that's when right. you show love mm. towards someone, it's going to build them up. Because right. it's not trying to bring them down. Mm. It's going to edify them to build them up. Amen? That's Some right. people that have knowledge, they always want to make themselves to be better than someone so they can bring them lower than themselves. Mm. So it feels like they're, they're beneath them, but you're above them. Mm. But see, with God, he's not like that. That's why when Jesus died, he said we can abide in him and we can sit in him even as he sits in his throne mm -hmm. in Revelation. And it says we sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's how much he said we're part of the family. Praise God. Amen. He isn't just leaving us out as an outcast on the outside. Amen? Amen. God knows everything, but he doesn't sit there and try to mash a, bring us down with it. Amen? Amen? If you want to know how much he really knows when he showed up in Job, and you go in chapter 37, 38, 39, and he came up in a whirlwind, he had to rebuke a few of them, and he asked them, where were you? When I uh, was do making, uh, when the morning stars and the, what's it called, sons of God were there, and I made the chief cornerstone. And I, tell me if you know about how to put the clouds and the snow, and then what he uses to feed all the animals, and the rain, and all that, and where he hides his treasure. He said, let me know, tell me if you have this counsel. Mm -hmm. Who's going to know that? <laughs> I don't. I mean, his understanding of everything, because he made everything, his wisdom is beyond. Amen? Amen. That's why we got to continually abide in him, because we only know in part. Amen? Amen. We don't know everything. Praise God. But to have that intimacy with them, to really have a relationship is better than having a relationship really with anyone. Amen? Amen. But when you know them and have that love with them, then it's easier to love others as well. Amen. Amen. You'll love your brother or sister as well. Amen. Amen. You're not out to go hurt them. You're out to edify them and to build them up. Amen. Amen. You're looking to please them more than you are to please yourself. Amen. You're putting them before yourself. Amen. Amen. That, he said, by this shall all men know what you're my disciples when you have love one for another. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That type, because they'll see it. 
The world doesn't show it. Amen? Amen. The world's not showing that. You can see when they talk about dysfunctional families. Oh, yeah. Well, with God, he takes the imperfect. Amen? He takes the, what they say, the non-qualified and qualifies them. He takes the imperfect and he perfects them. Amen. Amen. Not that you're perfect in man's eyes. You're perfect because of Christ Jesus in his eyes because of the blood. But we're still, we, we're not perfect or complete yet in what we do and know. Amen. Amen. We, but we're, we're being perfected. Amen. In him. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, um, I just want to go here and just look at this, that, uh, you know, the, the, the scripture, just there, don't go far away from there. That, uh, that's Psalms 42. It's verse 1. It says, the word says that, as the deer, as the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. That means as the deer panted for the water, you know, because it will be so thirsty and drinking that water. So my soul, he says, so my, so my soul, you know, panted after, after God, you know, that we should have that hunger and thirsting for the things of God as the deer panted for the water. So my soul longed after thee. So when you want to drink water so bad, you know, when you are so thirsty, drink that water. Wouldn't you be thirsting for the things of God? Just the desire to seek God like that, you know, just like water. As you drink the physical water, that, that, that quenches your thirst. Because if a, a person, if you take away water for a few days, they can't do without water, you know. They, they, we, we have to drink water for us to live. We have to survive by water. Amen? But we can't live without Christ. For us to survive, we have to have Christ in us. Amen? And that intimate, intimate relationship is so important, is so vital. So it says, as the deer, as the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. Verse 2 says, my soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come appear before God? You want to appear before God all the time. You know, you want to spend time with the Lord. It's like, oh, you want to spend time with God. Sometimes you don't want to be distracted. You want to just spend time with God. And sometimes you won't even see how much time will go because you're just in love with him. You know, as I say that, you know, when you, are, when you have a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend or you want to get to know somebody, you keep calling them and you want to get to know them because and you want to talk to them. You want to hear their heart. You want to know where they're at. Right? So you, it, it, it's, it's spending more time with them. You're getting to know a person. But how do you know? How do I, are you going to know the Lord? You're not spending more time with them. You know, as the deer panted for the water, you know, so my soul longed after thee. So you want that to be that thirsty and hungry for the things of God. Let's hunger and thirst for the things of God. All of us, each one of us, because it doesn't separate. You know, you can't think that you are there, you know, I'm the pastor, or I'm the post or prophet, whatever you are. You still need to see God. You know, you still need to have that intimacy with God. Because even people say we're in different level. Okay, yeah, I'm fine, you're different, but you still need to seek the Lord. You don't know everything and you will never know everything. Amen? Because that's what the word says. You won't know everything. Yeah, there's a scripture that says that, right? We can't know everything. You know, as the heavens are higher than the earth. See, he says his thoughts are not our thoughts. 
His ways are not our ways. So as the heavens are higher than the earth. So <laughs> it doesn't matter how bishop or post, whatever you call yourself, it doesn't matter. Seek ye the Lord. Be intimate with God. You can't say I'm there. I quote scriptures day and night, whatever. I don't care about that. Spend time with God. That's what intimacy is all about. Just to seek him is a vital necessity. I'll just leave it with this. It, it says here in 1 Corinthians 12, and then we'll close. Amen. In, in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12, it says, For now, meaning present, we see through a glass or a mirror, darkly. And in other words, he's saying it, it, it could be, it's cloudy in that way. When he's saying darkly or you know, like, it may look like riddles. Or from many revelations, but then face to face. Anyone have an Amplified to read it out of? I want you to see something here. He, he says, now I know in part. Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah. I don't know everything. He said, now at this present, I know in part. Mm -hmm. I know some things. But then, when's that? Shall I know even also as also I am known? I want someone to read uh, the Amplified. And then he says, And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is what? Love. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, you got it? Or he has it? Oh, yeah, because I got the mic so I can read it. Thank you, bro. Appreciate the effort there. <laughs> so he says right here, he said in verse 12, for now in this time of imperfection, we see in a mirror dimly a blurred reflection, a riddle, a enigma. But then when the time of perfection comes, talking about where we become mature too, what happens when the time of perfection comes we will see reality that's continuing in truth and when you know the truth the truth makes you free right. amen mm -hmm. it says now i know in part just in fragments mm -hmm. you know i'm not knowing everything people who've been in the word 40 50 years they're still learning that's and right. sometimes they begin to see more that they don't know than what they thought they knew. That's right. Amen. Amen. The more you hang out, the more you stay in the presence or with the Lord, then you begin to realize, man, I haven't even really scratched a whole lot. <laughs> and then he says, but then, but now I know I'm part just in fragments, but then I will know fully just as I've been fully known by God. And now there remain faith, abiding, trust in God and his promises, hope, confident expectation of his eternal salvation, and love, unselfish love for others growing out of God's love for me. Mm -hmm. These three, the choices, grace, the choices, graces, but the greatest of these is love. Amen. 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 That's what? His love is unselfish love for others growing out of God's love for me. Mm. When you realize how much God loves you, then you can realize how much you can love others. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you really know God's love, that's really how much you know you've been forgiven. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. When you don't know how much you've been forgiven, it's hard for you to really forgive others. Because why? When people do things wrong to you, when you know how much you've been forgiven of all the wrong you've done, then it becomes reality more for you to know how it e easily it is to forgive others because you know the place you've been in where he forgave you for so much you've done. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank, Amen. You. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. And that's why when you come in God's presence, I'm just saying this, there was a time, I, I'm going to leave it alone after, I would come. And I, I would be crying all the time because I, really it was hard for me to forgive myself for all the things I've done. And it was hard for me to understand how much he could forgive me because you don't really know God's love. 
And then he was showing me it after time after time. But it took me a long time to really know God's love. But I wasn't quick to always point my finger at someone or judge them on stuff because all I was concerned about is just getting them saved and letting them know how much God really loves them, even though I was dealing with my own self of how much he needed to forgive me, which he already did, but I didn't have the revelation of how much he forgave me. So it was hard for me to forgive myself for everything, but you know, God forgave me, but I wasn't quick always to just hammer other people, you know, with it because when I realized, man, he forgiven me, wow, what's hard for him to forgive others, no matter what they do. I don't care what they've done. And sometimes the, the things we've, I've seen um, when we used to go to funerals and stuff, you know, you don't want to wait till someone's about to die to actually go there and repent to them and ask for their forgiveness. And a lot of people do that. That's really in the world. They go in there and they want to make up and everything when someone's about to die and be on their deathbed. Some things isn't worth it that much to wait till that time. You know, some things is better. Just go to the person and ask for forgiveness. That's why I like doing just get it out the way and let's move on. You know, that's that's what I want to do because I don't want to wait till something bad or tragic happens that, oh, now I should. And I've seen it a lot. I'm saying I'm north. I'm not I'm talking about, I've seen it. People getting shot and ready to die and then they want to go and make up. And then you got family people coming to a funeral that never comes when every other time there. It's just when someone's dying and now they're remorseful. Why wait for that time? We got only our birth date and the day where we die and that little space in between that dash to fulfill what we need to do for God in this life. Amen. And what he's going what he's going to count us by is the dash of what we done in this time. You know, his will and what we done for him. Amen. My whole thing is now all I want to do, I want to be in his will and do what you know, time goes on and on. I don't want to waste no more time. Amen. There's people dying every day, and there's people being born every day. Our part is to see who we can win or bring them to the Lord. Amen? You know, I'm not just saying, oh, we're preaching all over. But be led by the Spirit. And, you know, it's just a true witness, delivers souls. I don't even know where I'm going. But, you know, it, it, a true, it, it says he that witness souls is wise. But it's just walking in love. And then sharing the things of God or just showing love to people. If you can't win them in word, you win them in deed. Amen? In your actions. Amen? Some people know more about what you do than what you say. You know, in love. Amen? Praise God. And we'll, we'll close out in that one. Amen? Father, we just honor you and thank you. We thank you for your word today, Lord. Lord, we just want a deeper relationship with you, Father God. I know we're all growing in different stages and different places in our walk in you, Father God. We just want to know you more and know your love more, Father God. It really did have that revelation. You do love us, Father, more than we could ever know because you said you're greater than our heart and you know all things, Father. And Lord, we just ask right now, Father God, even every one of us, Lord, if we missed it somewhere, we repent, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. If we we allow things of the world to creep in, Father God, where it's replacing things in time with you, we repent of that, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. And we just thank you right now for your loving kindness, your gracefulness, your graciousness. And Father God, your forgiveness. And we thank you, Father God, that we can come before you and you're just and faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we thank you that you love us that much, Lord, that your blood cleanses us and washes us, Father. And we thank you for it now, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. And we just ask you, Father, for those who want to know you more yes. it first starts you, Lord Jesus. not just by knowing you as God but knowing you as a father yes. and the only way to know that 
is through your son. Thank you, Jesus. And who, whoever is watching or listening, if they don't know you, Father God, you, we Jesus. pray, Father, that they can have a better, have a relationship yes. and a fellowship with you, Father. You, Jesus. And we just pray for them right now. Thank you. If you don't know them, we ask, all you got to do is just call on them Thank and invite Jesus. them in. If you know your life and this word's touched you and there's some way you, you want to make things right, all you got to do is invite Jesus Thank in. You. What he did on the cross, he forgave yes. you of everything you've done. Thank the you, only Jesus. thing that separates a person that doesn't know God and that it is not believing on Jesus and receiving him. When you receive him, he's already forgiven you Thank according you, to his word. Yes. Amen. All you got to do is accept him for what he's done for you. That yes. He died for you and he rose again for you. Thank Amen. You, so you can be saved. Hallelujah. And we just pray Jesus. for you. If you have asked him to come in your heart, you just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me and heal me, deliver me and save me, Lord. And I ask you to come in my life and change me. And he'll do it now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just pray for those people who decided to make a change. Thank Father, you, we rebuke the hand of the enemy off their thank life. You, and we thank you yes. for giving them a newness of life, a change. You, Jesus. Yes. And we give you glory, honor, and praise for it. Thank in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. And we give you the thanksgiving. And we just worship you and adore you for it, Father God. Thank in you, Jesus. Jesus' mighty name. Thank and you, it, if, go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Um, there's someone, you feel like your neck is being pulled. I don't know, it's like you feel the whole neck is like something is being pulled. Something is going on there. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to pray even for this person right now. In Jesus' name, I bind that evil spirit. I take authority over that foul and clean spirit. And I command it to loose you right now. Cut out of their neck, you foul and clean spirit of witchcraft. Loose right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I cancel the assignment. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I speak deliverance and freedom right now, Lord. I take authority over that pain. I command that pain to loose your neck. Come out of his neck. Come out of their neck right now, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I speak deliverance and I speak healing. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, spirit, soul, and body, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Be free, in Jesus' mighty name. Be healed, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank and you, if Jesus. this message was a blessing to you and something change your life and prayers we just ask you you can go to arua intministries.com and share your testimony Thank we'd you, love Jesus. to hear from you Hallelujah. and uh, just to be able to encourage you and we just thank you for joining us this day. Thank you, We just Jesus. want you to know Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord and we love you. God bless. Thank you, Amen. Jesus.